The Wild Dees are rebuilding their town. Save as many as you can to open up new buildings and helpful resources. Wild Dees Cinema is now open. Rewatch some memorable scenes on the big screen. Welcome back to more Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Last time, we continued exploring the natural plains and learned about treasure roads. This time, we're going to try to finish exploring the natural plains, but first, I want to show off a little bit of the Waddle Dee Town. So basically, this is our main hub area of the game, uh, but we have these little signs here indicating numbers of Waddle Dees we have to save uh, to build something new. There is also a Maxim Tomato right here, so if you need a health refill, uh, that's a very easy way to get some health back. Um, there isn't a whole lot to see here yet, but as we continue rescuing more Wild Dees, uh, a lot more um, options will open up. By the way, also there's a warp star down here to Arrival Point, uh, which was the tutorial stage. Uh, but with that being said, let's head over to the world map once more. And our next stage is over here. A trip to a Lival Mall. Come on, Kirby, let's go save those poor captured Wildies. And yeah, that level name is very descriptive. We are actually going into a mall. I'll be honest, I really like the setting of Forgotten Land. Um, having this like abandoned world with a bunch of like, um, like buildings, uh, it's just a nice contrast to like a more traditional like Kirby setting. Um, it causes a lot of like uh, familiar theming, uh, but with unique twists that help to actually make these worlds, uh, make these stages really stand out. Um, so we have another uh, power-up from the older games, Needle, uh, but it works a little bit differently, actually. Um, basically, you can still, like, um, pop out a bunch of needles to damage enemies, but you can also roll a little bit. Um, but the rolling is a little bit tricky, actually. Uh, the way it works is, if you can pick up an enemy um, with the spikes, uh, you'll actually gain a little bit of momentum like this. You can also launch enemies like that uh, by releasing uh, the attack button. Um, so in a way, this is just a really deadly Katamari. Not that the Katamari wasn't already kind of dangerous as is, um, but as a Katamari fan, I'm actually completely okay with this new version of Needle. It's honestly really fun uh, trying to see how far you can roll continuously uh, without stopping like so. Um, Alright, so there's a donut sitting on this table, which is actually one of our secret objectives. Eat four donuts. Um, so we have to keep an eye out for donuts. Um, we have a Kabu here and some breakable blocks hiding another capsule. Um, I really like the music too. Um, this game has a really good soundtrack, and I feel like I've already praised it quite a bit, but I do really like how a lot of the music is more original. Eat an invincibility candy, so that was a fairly easy objective to get, actually. Um, I also like this remix, this like rock remix of the invincible candy theme. Again, it's actually nice having a little bit more, I'd say, variety uh, compared to other Kirby games, where I feel like a lot of the music is a little bit more safe in a way, um, but this game's soundtrack is actually pretty good. Um, so there was our first Waddle Dee of the stage. Um, we also have a pile of coins over here that we should probably try to pick up uh, before heading to the next part of the mall. So uh, we have a uh, shield over this locker, so let's actually defeat the enemies to lower the barrier. Um, also swapping over to Cutter, uh, but this is another mouthful mode transformation. Um, now, I actually don't quite understand how this works, if it's like mashing. I think it is actually like mashing the control stick different directions. Uh, I think I tried holding it before and it was a lot slower than that. Um, so there's an arrow telling us to go um, near a burger, I guess? So we have to keep that in mind. Um, 
Now, it is a lot more obvious what that means, but to be honest, I actually completely did not understand this when I first played. It took a second to play it through the stage to be like, oh, that's what it's trying to tell me. Um, so we have different areas here. Uh, we want to go through the area with the burger sign. All right, over here, um, we have a lot of food and a couple enemies there. They're just chilling. I'm gonna leave them alone. Um, but also, this is a good time to show off something special. So this game is controlled using the analog stick. Uh, so you might be wondering, uh, what does the D-pad do? Um, it actually is used for emotes. So if you press up on the D-pad, Kirby will wave like that. If you press left, you get a little, uh, high. Right on the D-pad is looking around, and down on the D-pad is sitting. Uh, again, attention to detail that was not necessary, but I greatly appreciate um, having these little emotes. So, uh, let's rescue our next Waddle Dee. If you go through one of the other paths, you'll have an empty treasure chest, and then a bunch of enemies will try to ambush you. Uh, so this is why you want to pick the correct route through them all. Also, there's another reason to pick the correct route through the mall. There is actually a mission for that, um, which I definitely did not get the first attempt through because I, uh, I definitely took a wrong turn. I had to replay the stage to actually collect everything. Um, we have Wild Frosty. Um, luckily, we were given fire right before this, so this isn't too bad. Uh, perfect dodge there. Uh, slow mo um, dodge to actually deal a little bit more damage. Um, Honestly, I'll be honest, fire is slightly broken in this game. Uh, if you use fire, basically if basically the enemy will catch on fire and they'll deal chip damage. Um, and that is extremely overpowered. Um, barely actually got the dodge window on that. Um, Wild Frosty is charging at us, uh, but we were able to uh, dodge out of the way, get through that fight unscathed. Uh, which bodes well. Um, I need to actually get better at dodging, so that's part of the reason why uh, I was dodging slightly excessively there, because I just wanted to get better at it. Um, so this is Ice. Um, it works a little bit differently than in other Kirby games. Um, basically, if you mash uh, the attack button, uh, you'll like slide forward like this. Uh, if you just hold the button down, you'll breathe like Ice Breath, but if you mash the button, you get this. Um, I want to say this was like a separate ability, actually, uh, Freeze, like from Kirby, uh, Nightmare in Dreamland, like Freeze and Ice were not the same ability. Um, we have this little conveyor belt, so we have a little star coin there. Uh, I feel like I should have gotten a another donut by now, I'm actually getting a little bit worried. I know where the last two donuts are, but I'm actually like a little bit worried about where one donut is. Um, I'll keep an eye out, I don't know if I've missed or not, uh, but I'm going to definitely check thoroughly to be on the safe side. Um, I actually don't think I ever found this one. They're randomized anyway, so it doesn't really matter collecting specific ones. They're not like the uh, um, collectibles in other games where there'd be like special puzzle pieces that were only one item or anything like that, so it's not as critical to pick up everything. Uh, but it's still a good idea, I think, to pick up as many uh, capsules as possible just to speed up the completion process overall. Um, we have another Wild D. Yeah, I'm actually starting to get genuinely concerned that I missed a donut somewhere. Um, which isn't great. Alright, so we have another little uh, branching path area here. Um, but there are a lot of signs, and there are several. Um, like, there are two cakes. So that actually makes it a little bit tougher uh, this time. So we actually have to find a hint of where to go, like before. Um, that might be a little bit tougher because there are more signs to choose from. Uh, let's move this locker because it definitely seems like there's a hint here. Uh, cake, that is not helpful because there are two of them. Um, so we have to keep going, basically. Um, there's this one over here. And if we move this one, uh, we have another secret little office area. Um, showing an ice cream. So basically what this means is we have to go 
through the cake exit that is opposite of the ice cream cone. Um, yeah, I'm actually genuinely trying to remember where that donut I'm missing is. Uh, because I, I'm pretty sure I missed it. Um, in which case, we'll have to go through the stage again, which isn't a big deal. The stage isn't too terribly long, but it's kind of a shame. So yeah, the one opposite of the ice cream. Alright, so... Uh, we have another little, uh, food area here. Lots of cake. And also another Waddle Dee. Um, is this three or four? This is four, so that's not too bad. Um... Lots of coins, too, which is great. Um, we have this here, uh, which reveals another donut. Yeah, I think this should be number three, so we definitely missed one. And yeah, this is the exit, so yeah, I don't know where that was, though, so that's kind of a problem. Um, so yeah, I'll go through the stage and try to figure out where that is. There are a couple places where I think it could be, um, but also we have another little locker here. Um, but it's actually bolted into the wall, but uh, that won't stop us because we're Kirby. <laughs> we can do things like just rip the entire wall out. Um, Alright, so we have the exit there. Navigate them all without getting lost. Um, but first, we actually do want to um, go over here because this is where the uh, fourth donut is. So yeah, I flat out missed one somewhere. Uh, but we'll finish up the stage and see if we can figure out where it is. So this is our first stage that we didn't get a full clear on, unfortunately. Um, I knew it was going to happen at some point, I just didn't think it would be this soon. Needle! Ouch! Ooch! Careful with those spikes! Jab enemies in place or pick them up by rolling around. Nab a whole bunch of them together, then launch them, all, launch them off all at once. Pow! Jab hog! Charge those points up, then zing! Let him fly! Jab Hog is famous in the New World for its spiky spines. They were short and cute when it was young, but they eventually grew into dangerous needles. They'll jab anything that gets too close, so approach with caution. Bandana Waddle Dee Bandana Waddle Dee was pulled through the vortex along with Kirby. When he heard that his fellow Waddle Dees were being captured by the Beast Pack, he grabbed his trusty spear and ran to help. He can join you as player 2 while you explore the new world. Wild Dees helped you open the gate that was blocking your way. Head into the stage and challenge the boss that's guarding this territory. We also have another treasure road, uh, but before we move on, I do want to find that last donut to clear the stage. So one thing to keep in mind is none of the donuts will be at the dead end or the wrong paths. So they're somewhere on the main path. Another thing worth keeping in mind is uh, you actually have to complete a stage to clear an objective. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that when games actually require you to finish stages when you're missing like one thing. Um, also in missions like this where you actually have um, where you actually have uh, to collect a certain amount of things, you actually do have to collect everything in one go. Um, so for example, the Waddle Dees that you save, you don't have to collect all at once. Um, if you go through a stage again, we'll actually probably see this at some point, um, but if you go through a stage again, uh, instead of a Wild D, you'll simply find coins. Um, 
but the actual missions in some cases do have to be completed all in one go, but you can technically um, do separate missions in different playthroughs, which is nice. Um, I actually feel like the donut should have been in the conveyor belt area, uh, from what I remember of this stage. Um, my short-term memory is not the best, in all honesty, so even though I had played this game not that long ago for the first time, um, I definitely haven't committed everything to memory, um, which, uh, this is definitely an example, just genuinely, like, even though I have played this technically, um, I definitely haven't played it enough to fully remember where every possible item is, so we'll probably miss a few more collectibles along the way, um, especially as we get into the later stages and there's a lot more stuff to, to worry about and more of like cryptic object objectives. So, speaking of short-term memory, what was the correct path again? Um, I think it's uh, ice cream for the other one, but this one is, yeah, burger. Um, yeah, I actually need to be a little bit more thorough than it was last time because I definitely missed stuff. Um, yeah, I want to say it's on the conveyor belt part of the stage, um, but I genuinely feel like I should have seen it, um, if it was there. But again, it could have been in plain sight and I just missed it because, frankly, that's something I do a lot. I don't think it's in this, this area. Yeah, that's just burgers and fries. Oh, that makes sense, actually, because of the sign, so it makes sense that this is like that part of the food court. Um, got some more coins, but nothing too major. Yeah, I think it's here somewhere, but I just need to actually figure out where, uh, where in this area it was. Um, also we do have to fight this boss again. Um, to be fair, we actually do need to practice this fight because, um, there is a, a mission later on that requires you to fight this boss without taking damage. Um, and that mission kind of sucks because of uh, other circumstances. Um, so if you uh, really master dodging Wild Frosty's attacks, um, that helps a lot, that mission. By the way, something else worth keeping in mind, uh, when the boss is like transitioning between uh, phase one and two, um, the boss will take less damage um, in general, but there are cases where, with fire, if you're still doing chip damage, that's still helping. Um, so again, that's why I feel like fire is extraordinarily overpowered, actually. And po possibly one of the best abilities in the game, especially early on. Um, there are some more overpowered abilities as well, um, but like in terms of early game stuff, fire is definitely up there for one of the best power-ups. Um, yeah, I am basically convinced, playing the stage again, uh, that's somewhere in here. Uh, but, but where in here? I have no idea. Um, we'll see what we can find, I guess. Um, in general, I do feel like Kirby games tend to be like this, though. Like, you know, playing it casually, the game isn't bad. Um, trying to actually complete the game that becomes a whole other story, and usually uh, completing Kirby games is kind of a headache, actually. Um, compared to most Kirby games, this game is actually not that bad. Like, um, completing Forgotten Land is actually relatively straightforward compared to, like, the majority of Kirby games. Um, at least from my experiences, it wasn't even too terrible going through, like, the um, stuff that would normally be really challenging in other Kirby games. Um, but yeah, there's also an easier mode as well. Obviously, that wouldn't help in this case because it's a collectible we're missing. There it is. Um, we missed the little sparkle on the ground. Um, I figured it'd be something like that. I'm actually glad I wasn't completely misremembering and I just forgot a very specific key step of it. Um, also, it's worth mentioning that these are fixed uh, exits. Um, I am going through this just to double check um, because we do need to go through the right path here uh, to actually get the last ice cream or the third ice cream. Uh, so it's just double checking that it was ice cream. Uh, I meant donut there. Also, by the way, uh, ice actually has a shield basically. So instead of just guarding, you're basically immune to damage in a lot of cases. 
in general, I feel like most power-ups are actually really good in this game. Um, like, there aren't a ton of power-ups I feel like are particularly weak, and most of them are fairly effective. Also, one cool detail, the chest doesn't actually shake uh, when there's not a Wild D inside. Uh, since it's just coins, it's not actively shaking. Um, that's a really interesting uh, attention to detail, um, to not have it shaking when it's just money. Alright, so we've reached the exit once more. Um, got dodged the bomb there, and we get to tear the building apart again, so this is always fun. Um, yeah, I do feel like it's more of like an up and down motion, instead of just holding one direction. Um, that's what I, what, what I did traditionally in my first playthrough, and it was very slow. Uh, so that does seem to be the optimal strategy. Um, Alright, so... Uh, that didn't take too long, thankfully. Uh, found the last dome that we needed relatively easily. And there we go, our final objective and the end of the stage. That is all Waddle Dee's saved for the Alival Mall. Bernard. This uppity pup is an expert marksman, Pew Pew, who is quick on his feet as he patrols the new world. His eyes are hidden under his hat, but that doesn't seem to affect his aim. He also has an impressive sniffer that can track prey near or far. Alright, now that we've cleared out all the regular stages, uh, let's head over to the boss stage, the Brawl at the Mall. Boss stages work a little bit differently than regular stages, I mean, they, the main thing is you fight a boss, uh, but there are no hidden wild Ds, so instead of uh, three hidden objectives, we actually have four to worry about. Um, these I may not show on screen because some of them are very specific and kind of will take a while, like they might take a few attempts to go through, so um, I might just talk about them and not necessarily show them and then collect them off screen uh, to speed things up. Um, basically objectives where I'm actively trying to find collectibles I'll try to show, but otherwise I might actually um, not show like, you know, perfect runs of stages. And our first boss is the strong-armed beast Gormondo. Mission 1 is to slip through Gormondo's legs, not too bad. Um, the other missions are a little bit tougher. Uh, there's a time attack mission to clear this fight within 2 minutes. Uh, we have to defeat Gormondo with the sword for one mission. And the toughest one is to clear the stage without taking any damage. Um, which is definitely easier said than done, and I'm not sure if I can do this with sword. Um, I would definitely recommend fire for the reasons I've outlined already. That fire is just kind of overpowered because of chip damage. Um, if I can actually get this uh, with sword, I'll actually be kind of impressed. Even though the boss will take less damage uh, while they're preparing for the next stage, you might as well keep attacking just because you might as well do as much damage as you can. Also, the level of carefulness you need um, may conflict with the time. So I would actually recommend going for the no hit achievement and the um, time attack separately just because of needing to be more careful for the no hit versus wanting to be a little bit reckless for the, the uh, time attack. We're almost done actually. This went really well.
So we defeated Guamondo with sword. What else did we unlock? We definitely didn't take damage. Uh, clear within two minutes. So I think that means we actually got everything in one run, which I'm honestly very impressed by. Yep, there we go. I feel like that kind of makes up for getting a little bit turned around in the, the previous stage. You saved all of the Waddle Dees and Natural Plains. Gotcha Machine Volume 1 is now available. Turn the crank to get a figure. Try to collect the whole set. Wild D's Weapon Shop is now open. Head here to make your copy abilities even stronger. Alright, so Elfillin wants us to check out the, uh, the weapon shop, uh, but I think we'll go over that next time. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Kirby and the Forgotten Land.